Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking experimental design. All right, so we're in this larger thought process about data collection, right? And we've we've already talked about observational studies, right? We talked a little bit about anecdotal evidence. Now we're, we talked a little bit about observational studies. Okay, right? That's where we're not controlling the environment. Okay, people are kind of sorted into the control group, treatment group on their own or, or something like that. Right? And the big thing with observational studies, yeah, we can study pretty much anything. Right? We can find interesting associations, but we know there's always the, the confounding factors going on. Right? So what do we do to get rid of those confounding factors? Well, maybe if we set it up right, we can do a controlled experiment. Right? Sometimes it's called a controlled experiment or, or a designed experiment. All right, so we're using ideas, especially such as randomization, to try to isolate cause and effect. All right, so if we do this right, we may be able to show cause and effect. So what do we, we mean by doing it right? Okay, so in some, now there's, there's kind of some gray area between you know, an observational study and experiment. Some use elements of both. Right? But in general, an experiment, we're imposing treatments on some group. Right? So we're comparing this treatment to either just a control group, nothing going on there, a group that's receiving what's called a placebo. Right? You're probably familiar with this term. We'll talk about it a little bit later or another treatment, right? If we have different levels of these treatments, okay, we'll, we'll define that in a minute. All right, so what are our goals of experiment design? What do, we, what do we mean when we say, if it's done right, what do we mean? Well, we know, and we've already mentioned, we're using some sort of randomization. So that's number one goal of experimental design. Randomize things, we wanna replicate things, and we wanna control our environment, control our error. Essentially, we use these three things to just make sure that our treatment group and control group are as similar as possible. And also, we don't want people often to know that they're in the control group if they are. Okay, so experimental design is, is fairly straightforward. In, in a lot of cases, but there's a lot of terminology that's thrown around. Okay, so we've, we've, we're familiar with this idea of a, what a treatment is, right? A treatment is whatever, the, the, whatever we're testing, whatever people are getting. But for more complicated experimental designs, our variables or our treatments are often called factors, especially if they're categorical, right? The different values of these factors are called levels. So if I have multiple factors, the different levels of these factors are each going to create interactions or treatment combinations. So remember, an idea was if our individual is in a control group, we don't want them to know that they're in a control group. So how do we do that? Right, well, we use this practice of blinding. Okay, A blind study is one where the participants don't know whether they're receiving the treatment or not. Adding on to that, a double-blind study is when the researchers and the participants don't know who's in what group. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, that's where a placebo comes in. Okay, so oftentimes, when you think of a placebo, the classic example is we're doing a drug trial and the control group gets a sugar pill, right? But the placebo is really an idea. Right, a placebo, there's lots of different ways of achieving a placebo. Right? Um, an example of a study that I saw before, they had people who thought they needed knee replacements. So they broke them up into two groups. One group got the knee surgery. The other group, they, they put them under anesthesia. They, they cut their knee open, but they just stitched them right back up. They didn't actually get the replacement. So both groups, when they came out of surgery, they, they didn't know whether they got the knee replacement or not. They, they all had scars, and they put them through rehab. It actually turned out that the, the group that did not get the knee replacement 
ended up doing better after they went through rehab. Okay, so that's that example is just an interesting use of this idea of a placebo. Okay, but there are issues with using a placebo. Right, that example also sort of demonstrates this idea of the placebo effect. Right, sometimes, and, and this is true in you know, de depression studies, um, things like that, um, all, all kinds of different studies. There's all kinds of demonstrations about the placebo effect. Right, If people just know they're in an experiment, oftentimes they show some sort of reaction. All right, getting to the replication idea. Well, we know replication means, okay, we obviously want to repeat this as much, and one way of doing that is having a lot of people in your study. All right, that's great. That's, I think that's pretty obvious. We want a lot of people in our study. All right, but another way of, of, of creating this replication is what's called repeated measures. Right? And that's where individuals go through a process more than once. Right? This eliminates variability of the person's reaction. Because right? if a person only goes through a process once, okay, maybe they have some sort of weird outcome that one time they do it. But if we have a person go through it again and again, you know, a person goes through something five times, if we then take something like the average of those five times, the same person repeating the process, then we get much more accurate results. Okay, so these are all terms that you see pop up when we're dealing with experimental designs. Okay, so our most basic design right, is just we've got a treatment group and control group comparing the two all right, in some sort of randomized fashion. Right, that's what we could kind of think about of as a completely randomized experiment. Right, the name is, is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think we have to go into that too far. But some other common designs you see. Number one is a block design. Right, block designs are good when going into something, I know that there's some sort of, some sort of predetermined factor that is going to have implications on the outcome. Right, so like for example, if I'm if I'm looking at maybe something that's going to affect males and females differently, right? Like a I don't know a weight loss drug or something, it might affect males and females differently because they have different physiology. Well, if I divide them into males and females to begin with, so I have one block of males, one block of females and then have a treatment group and control group of males, treatment group and control group of females, right? then I'm controlling for gender in that case. Right? So oftentimes if there's, if there's something that we know is going to have an implication on our outcomes, we want to block them from the beginning. Another very common design is matched pairs. Right? Matched pairs is where I'm taking two very similar individuals, I'm putting one of them in the treatment group, one of them in the control group, and I'm comparing their outcomes. All right? Now, it's in, in lots of cases, it's hard to find very, very similar people, but some common ways of creating a matched pair situation are twin studies. Twin studies obviously would, would control for genetic factors. So maybe you saw a few years ago, they sent an astronaut into space for a year, and he had a twin. So when he got back, they could compare him to his twin to see how space had really affected him. All right, again, that's just a just one pair of people, right? But tw the idea of a twin study is to control for genetic factors. Another common matched pairs design that we often see is a before and after or a pre and post test type situation. Right? Like if I had given you guys the final exam before this class started, we do the class and then you take the final exam after the class and I compare your results, right? We could we could judge the effectiveness of the class. Right? So pre post before after and also this idea of a crossover design. Right? This is sort of an artificial way of creating matched pairs on the same person. Right, the crossover design is a little bit more a little bit more advanced design, but it's an interesting one to create matched pairs. 
All right, so I hope you got some of this terminology of experimental design down. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.